What's up everybody? Today we're gonna to be working on these original 1996 Concord 11s. This is a beautiful shoe. They don't make them like this anymore. Our job today is to make these fully wearable once again. I'm gonna show you guys how to glue the sole onto the midsole, midsole onto the upper. But first, I'm gonna show you guys how brittle the glue on these OGs are. Let's get to work. Hopefully the UV rays can remove some of the yellowing off this mesh. We're not gonna be working on these uppers for a little while, so we're gonna put these in there now so we can come back to do a lot of prep work on the missiles. Getting the missiles off the uppers was really easy. The glue was super brittle. However, these have been previously re-glued, so it's not as easy getting these off. In some areas, it's coming undone pretty badly. In some other areas, it's holding up really well. We gotta get the sole fully off so we can redo it. So we're gonna be using some acetone and a syringe. We're gonna pop some acetone inside the little crevices to fully get it off. So for this step, you may wanna use a mat. Acetone, paint, and a white mantle do not mix well together, so make sure to use a mat or a clean surface. Got the sole off nicely, the syringe is a nice trick. If you guys hear closely, that's a broken down air unit inside. That's not supposed to sound like that. It's supposed to be fully intact, but that happens with age. So with the sharp X-Acto knife, we're gonna go in, cut open the lid so we can clean out that broken down air unit. All the air units are out, we'll replace those later. Next step, prep work. Using some acetone and cotton balls, we're gonna wipe off the glue off the soles, top part of the midsoles and bottom. Of course, we gotta use a mask and glove. Got the majority off using acetone, however, in some areas it's on there pretty good. So using a Dremel, we're gonna get it off. It's important to use a metal drill bit and not a sanding one, cause it's gonna help maintain the texture on the soles. You don't wanna smooth out the texture on the sole, cause when it's time to bond it onto the midsole, it's not gonna adhere properly. The texture on the sole is there for a reason. All done with the dremeling, the metal drill bits is key. That's a new trick I just picked up. Next step real quick, using some acetone and cotton balls, we're gonna wipe off any remaining glue so we can move on to the midsoles. Prep is complete. We're gonna put these soles inside the VIC 2000 with the uppers. I'm not trying to get these fully icy, which I could using some Rejuvenator Soul Revive. I'm just trying to get these a couple shades lighter. I like the vintage vibe, but I wouldn't mind if these were a little bit less yellow. <laughs> Getting the glue off the top area was really easy just using acetone and cotton balls. However, the bottom part, that's where it gets kind of tricky. I had a hard time getting the glue off the soles, that's why I had to bust out the Dremel. For this part, we're gonna be using some paint stripper. So what it's gonna do is weaken up this glue. After a few minutes, we'll go in with the scraper and scrape most of it off. So far so good, we got the majority of the junk off the sole. Next we're gonna wipe off the remaining paint stripper and glue using some acetone and cotton balls. We're also gonna take care of the top area. Prep is complete, we got rid of all the glue off these midsoles. Now the next step we gotta do is a deep clean. After doing all that work, we did get the midsoles pretty stained up. We gotta get them back to fully white before we start gluing. So for this, we're gonna be using our rejuvenated brass bristle brush and stip bristle brush, as well as our rejuvenated solution to get these back to fully white.
the deep clean is complete, we got these back to white. Next step, we're gonna tape off where originally the air unit was once placed. Once we tape it all off, we're gonna peel it and we're gonna use that to cut out the EVA foam. Got our pattern piece. Next, we're gonna lay it down on this EVA foam. We're gonna trace it and then cut with an X-Acto knife. Foam is cut out, these are gonna fit perfectly. Next, we're gonna be applying some glue to the bottom and sides, same thing with the midsoles, so we can bond them together. All right, glue's all cured. Just put it inside, heat it up so we can stick it all together. EVA foam is in place. Right now it's not sitting very flush, so with the Dremel, we're gonna get it nicely leveled. It's a lot of gear. EVA foam is in place, these shaped up nicely. These are gonna be way more comfier than before. We also got the soles out of the indoor setup. These look so much better than before. I'm sure if I apply some rejuvenator sort of vibe and put them in there for a couple days, we'll get them back to icy, but again, I like the yellow look. Next step, we're gonna give everything a quick wipe down with some acetone and cotton balls to wipe off any remaining glue. After that, we're gonna be applying some bar cement to the top piece and bottom piece of the midsole and soles. Glue's been applied to the midsoles and soles. We're gonna let those cure for a couple hours before we go in and stick it together. We got these at the indoor setup. The UV rays did a great job pulling some of the yellowing from the mesh. So the next step we're gonna do is some prep work. For this, you don't wanna use acetone because it can damage the panel leather. So we're gonna be using a Dremel with a 60 grit sanding bit to get all the old glue off. Dremeling is all done. This took a little while. When you're doing this step, you gotta make sure you have a steady hand because one quick slip up can cause the whole panel letter to be ruined. Next step, we're gonna finish off the prep work with some acetone and cotton balls to finish wiping off the bottom boards. Prep is 100% complete. Next, we're gonna be applying our bar cement onto the uppers. We just gotta be very careful and not get any glue on the black panel leather. Glue's been applied to the uppers. We're gonna let those cure for a couple hours. Now we're onto the midsoles and the sole. We're gonna be heating it up little by little and sticking it together. We'll start off at the back. Glue 
glue job is complete from the soles onto the midsoles. Everything lined up nicely. I started the re-glue process on this point, making sure it was lined up perfectly. I took care of the rest of this back area, and then I jumped over to this front, making sure these two areas were lined up perfectly. After that, I applied heat to the rest of the sole to make sure everything was bonded nicely. Same thing, we're gonna start from the back, make sure everything's lined up properly. We'll heat it up. Once it's bonded, we'll jump to the front, then do the rest of the sides. The biggest tip I can share with you guys during this part is to not apply too much heat. If you apply too much heat, you can warp and shrink the midsoles and there's no going back. For this process, you wanna take your time. All right, good to go gluing the sides. Everything lined up nicely. We still have to heat up the insides to complete the bonding process. Glue job is complete. These are looking great, but we still have to go in and give these a light cleaning. The glue job still needs to dry before we do that. To speed up the process, we're gonna put them in the fridge for a solid 20 minutes. Now that the glue job is all complete, we're onto the details. We gotta give the shoe a quick clean using a rejuvenator solution and a soft bristle brush. Over the last couple days, I've been touching the shoe a lot during the prep work. I've been doing a lot of sanding, grabbing the uppers and stuff, so I'm sure I've created some marks and stains here and there. So we're gonna go in and give everything a nice wipe down. The soles and mantles are already clean, so we're just gonna focus on the pound leather and the white mesh. Shoes are all dried, now we're onto the pound leather. Overall, it's pretty shiny, but I can get it even shinier. We're gonna be using our mink oil, this buffing tool, a microfiber towel, and some alcohol wipes. The quality on the pound leather of these OGs is top notch. I wouldn't recommend using alcohol wipes on any of the new retros, because they can dole out the shine. The material on these OGs is different and won't damage them. Back to shiny. Now the moment I've been waiting for, let's lace them up. All right, everybody, that is gonna bring us to an end on these OG 1996 Concord 11 restoration. I'm not gonna lie, it takes a lot of work to properly re-glue a shoe. Between all the prep work I gotta do, laying down the glue, lining it up, it takes hours, sometimes days. But for a project like this on some OG Concord 11s, it's worth it every time. They simply don't make them like this anymore. The quality, the build is just way different from the newer retros. You can tell they use different materials on these shoes. They're just a lot thicker, a lot sturdier, very different from the newer retros. These were given to me by a good friend of mine, so to have these OGs fully wearable in my collection is something really special and I can't wait to wear them. Again, you guys, re take a lot of work and time. To do them correctly, you gotta take your time, do all the prep work, and you get results like this every time. Don't forget, you guys, we have this huge giveaway going on right now for hitting 1.5 million subscribers on YouTube. We're giving away a pair of Off-White UNC Jordan 1s and a pair of Off-White Jordan 5s, as well as $1,000. Don't miss out, you guys. To enter, hit the link in the description. Good luck, everybody, and thank you guys for the support. This is Vic Almighty. I'll catch you guys next Monday. See you guys.